When Matthew's lost dog Midas suddenly came wandering back into the garden, Matthew was overjoyed, but then he saw that his dog was not alone. He had something in his mouth and Matthew quickly found out that it was a living animal, but he had no idea what it was, so he ended up bringing it to the vet to get it checked out. But when the vet laid eyes on Midas, his find, he was in complete shock. When the vet came back into the room, he was suddenly wearing gloves. He carefully picked up the animal and put it in an isolated cage. Only then did he start to breathe normally again. But now Matthew was extremely worried as he had been carrying this creature in his hands, and Midas had even carried it in his mouth. Matthew demanded an explanation, but all the vet could manage to, to say at first was, this can't be true. But then he started to explain, but what animal did Matthew's dog Midas bring home? Where did it come from, and why did the vet react so worried? That morning, Matthew had woken up with the worst possible nightmare. The dog Midas, his most loyal companion, was gone, and he had no idea where the animal could be. It wasn't just a nightmare, it was actually happening in real life, and the only one who could be blamed for it was Matthew himself. Matthew was not particularly a sport fan, but when it came to football, he knew all there was to know about his favorite team. There had been an important game in town the evening before, and the drinking that came with this often made him rather forgetful. But until yesterday, he had never forgotten something very important. It had been a crazy night that he remembered all too well. But the last hour or so had been a blank mind. When Matthew woke up this morning, he saw that he'd left the back door of the house wide open, not far after he concluded that Midas was gone. He must have wandered off through there, no doubt. It really was his biggest fear, as he knew that his dog did not function very well without him, especially in unknown places. Matthew had been running through the neighborhood all morning, yelling Midas's name, during which he woke up all his neighbors. Luckily, instead of being angry, most of them opted to help looking for the dog. Most of the neighbors loved Midas and his owner Matthew, as they were always stopping for a little talk whenever they were passing by on the street. Some neighbors had known the kind and gentle Midas for years, and the dog going missing was a blow to the whole street. Sadly, though, they had no success finding the dog that morning. Matthew's pet must have wandered off a lot further from home and gotten lost. Or worse, somebody might have taken him. Maybe he did something last night that scared Midas away. Matthew was feeling more devastated by the minute, although he knew that he had to stay composed if he were to find his loyal companion again. When Matthew knew he was actually looking at his Midas, tears started to well up as his eyes. The lady on the other end of the line was still asking a question about his situation when Matthew hung up the phone without a second thought. He rushed outside and gave Midas the biggest hug ever, after which the animal suddenly stepped away from him. This was something that Matthew, in all their years together, had never experienced. His dog was the most social dog ever, making it was very unlike Midas to not be accepting his love and attention. Was he still hallucinating after all? But then Matthew noticed something that had to be the reason for the strange behavior. Midas was holding something in his mouth, but by the way that the dog was keeping it, Matthew had the feeling that it wasn't food or something to play with. By the looks of it, Midas held the object very gently. So now Matthew tried again to come closer by approaching his furry friend much more carefully. He got closer and closer until he could feel the breath of his dog with the tip of his fingers. He slowly brought his hand in front of Midas's mouth, and it did not take very long for Midas to gently give him that which he had been holding there. Matthew was somewhat shocked by what he was seeing. At first, Matthew was not sure whether he could place whatever this was. When he turned it over, however, it became obvious. This was a baby animal, yet Matthew was unable to know for sure what kind of tiny mammal Midas had brought to him, and perhaps the more interesting question, where did Midas get it from? The tiny mammal was brought to the living room where Matthew sat down to examine the creature in the light of a big standing lamp. It could be a wild animal that Midas had picked up from the nearby forest, or it could be somebody's pet, Matthew thought. Still, he was clueless, and at first he had no idea how to figure out the truth. Matthew was tired from all these new elements of the story that were emerging in the course of the day. He needed some professional help with this matter, and the only thing that Matthew could think of was to bring this creature to the vet. Maybe he could also just take it off his hand as he had no idea what to do with it. An additional reason to contact a vet was the fact that also Midas had been in an unknown, possibly risky place before. It wasn't such a bad idea to give his dog a quick checkup as Matthew had no idea what had happened in his absence. 
He quickly made an appointment for that very afternoon. Then Matthew noticed something that he hadn't seen before. Midas was constantly looking at the baby, not taking his eye off the creature he'd brought home for longer than five seconds. Even when the dog was eating its food, which was something Midas would normally do with all his attention, it would often look up to see if the baby was still there. He knew that Midas was a caring dog, both towards humans and the animals, but Matthew had never seen him act like this to any other creature before. On the one hand, it was kind of sweet, but on their other hand, it had felt very strange having this unknown soul under his roof, and Midas's behavior had raised even more questions now. The vet eventually found out Midas had brought home a baby bunny, but it just happened to be albino, which is why it was impossible to recognize as a bunny just by looking at it. It could very well be that its mother had dumped the baby because of this, and Midas most likely saved the animal's life by bringing it home.